Guys, so this year is a lot different. I don't know about quality, but certainly clarity. We've got a lot more turbid water, and I know we've got um, an algae bloom, and so the phytoplankton has exploded, which I think is great. I just wanna take a water quality test. We'll be able to tell a lot more after about a week of putting a jar full of pond water into a dark room and assess if it stays the same clarity or if it settles out. I'm also gonna get the pond test kit out again and check all of the phosphate, nitrite, and uh, pH. I don't know what the water temperature is, but I would say close to 70. So I'll take a before and after once we get inside where the sunlight is maybe not so bright. All right, now I got our samples. This is the before. Now I'm gonna go stick it in a dark place. So what I've gathered from our situation is that after the test, and putting this jar in a dark room, starving it from sunlight, all of the plankton, the algae bloom, settled to the bottom. And so what's causing our turbidity in the water is just excess organic material in the pond and so that was reassuring to know that it's nothing more than that we can handle it and we'll figure out how to get that all balanced here in the coming months and now to the results of the water test here you can see the four different tests i've got the the wide range ph on the left ammonia nitrite and phosphate in left to right starting with the ph it looks like it's between eight and a half and nine which is on the high end or alkaline and so not super concerning, but I wish we could get it down to, into the 7.5 to 8 range. The ammonia looks good. You want 0 parts per million. Nitrite also 0. And phosphate, you want 0 ideally as well. I would say we're in the, in the half to 1 parts per million based on this tense. 1 isn't terrible, but that is what part of the reason what's contributing to our excess vegetation and algae growth because there's excess phosphate that the pond needs to use and vegetation is the result. The more I study this, the more fascinated I am and the more in awe of God's design. The timing of when the algae bloom as the water warms up and the zooplankton fill the water column is just in time for all of the fish fry to hatch and they need something to eat and it's the zooplankton in the water that is their primary food source for their first few months of life. It is 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Thank you for all who have served fighting for our freedom. Thank you for Jesus who sets us free ultimately. It is hot and the water's clarified so our algae bloom in the pond has cleared up the the plankton and we have got a ton of activity a lot of little fry so let's take a peek down there and what we've also got is a bunch of filamentous algae over there can you believe that all in the shallows and over here on this side I've noticed a couple floaters, a couple fish floating, a bunch of them in there that are that are small little guys. Those are the sizes that I want the the bass to start picking off. Floating around in the shallows with a the camera, these size of bluegills are all over the place, hiding in and amongst all of the fine vegetation. Let's remember a year ago today, our pond was four feet low. And the leak was just draining it. We just take a minute and celebrate the fact that it is pretty self-sustaining. On the, on the tape here, 32 and a half is full right there. We are about a foot or about an inch and a half low right now. Our leak is pretty well sealed because we got all of these little fry. I want to see if I can identify what those what those guys are. And at a closer look, 
These are either fathead minnows or shiners. I think that they are shiners, actually. Hey, I got one. What do we got? What is this little guy? It's got a green back. Black stripe all the way down. Oh, he jumped out. Fisher. Oh yeah, look at that haul. What do we have? Shiners. Young of the year. Naturally producing. That's awesome. So what I heard from my last video is that many of you like the underwater camera footage almost as much as I do. Maybe you like it more. I'm not sure if you could because I love this. This is sitting right underneath our dock and all of the smallmouth and the big bluegill hang out here. This is where I feed fish and where a lot of the shiner minerals are hanging out, swimming around. And look at this big fatty perch right here. They're not even pregnant anymore. That's a good size perch. So that's exciting. The smallmouth are growing up. The bluegill are harvestable already. It's just really cool to see all the life right underneath the dock. Threw a couple pellets out here. The minnows are just swarming it, picking off little chunks of it. They're like little ants trying to carry that food ball back to their nest. So as I'm throwing pellets in here, you can see the bluegill are going crazy at it. But look at these shiners. These are the big adult shiners that are laying all of the eggs and producing all of the little shiners that we're finding swimming around on the surface. And that's super cool to see. And great financially because they're about $11 a pound if you buy them in bulk. And so if they can reproduce naturally in the pond and create the forage base, if they reproduce enough free fish, we'll pay for this fiasco. That's a, that's a healthy male. Oh, look out, look out. Ooh, this is nice. This is a big, big female. Ooh, this is a green sunfish here. Got a little bigger mouth. Lip this guy. Okay. You can see the different coloration on this one. Pretty fish, bigger mouth. Now the small mouth right underneath the dock. I catch it taking a dump on camera right here, just adding to the excess organic material at the bottom of the pond. <laughs> That's funny. Why is he eating this thing when there's so many other a little guy. Gosh, I wonder, did they spawn last year? Huh. Oh, look out, look out. There's a, there's a happier. Okay. Okay, it's a little better. Plump belly. There's plenty of food down there for you, guy. Just pushed out from shore, seeing what's out here near the bottom. I think I've got all the species in the pond.
is this mat. This is just a dense mat. There's tons, tons of minnows all up in there. Of course, got all sorts of nooks and crannies and crevices to hide in. Got him. Right, he's gonna start to go. Getting this one's getting a little bigger. Eight and a half, nine probably. Brittle water nymph. It is pretty brittle. Just a huge old mat of it. Okay, so this is just incredible. The amount of string algae growing in the waterfall and right here at the base of it, it's just, I mean, it, it's the entire algae mat over our shallows. Guys, this is not good. Not what I thought at all. But check out all of these, check out all of these guys right here in and amongst the algae. You see them in that pocket of water? Let's see if I can somehow, and they're sitting underneath the, look, huh. look at that. <laughs> you, this smallmouth was sitting right underneath all of those, all of those little guys. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I didn't even see him down there. It's because I got a bluegill in here as well. Oh, I love that color of smallmouth. Yeah, little guy, get out of that algae. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, but what I did find in there, also, was that little bluegill fry. Go get eaten. So I think on the next video, it's gonna be me waiting out here pulling cattails and scraping algae off.